Hi, welcome to the tutorial for the Turkish crochet necklace. This is what we're gonna make. So what do you need? You will need obviously beads. In this tutorial I'm using two types of four millimeter fire polished beads and 11-0 or 11-0 or size 11 seed beads. I strongly recommend you use Japanese or Czech seed beads because they're very regular but the Japanese also have a larger hole which is useful because we're gonna use quite a, a thick thread. You'll also need a little bit of super glue and then of course the thread. Now this is nylon beading thread I bought this in the US years and years ago and uh, this one does not have a size on it but it's about the same size as this one it's a little bit, little bit um, softer but maybe slightly thinner not sure but it's about the same size and this is a size F or number we oh, sorry that was off camera and this is a size F or number four thread and I think I bought this one in Las Vegas also um, many 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 years ago now um, you can also use beading thread like Nemo or Ceylon size D but then you have to double it up and this I do not recommend for the first time or for beginners but um, if you have a hard time finding a thicker, um, thicker beading thread this is also an option so double up uh, a regular size T uh, beading thread so let's start now we're not going to be able to use a beading needle to thread our uh, or string our beads because um, this thread doubled up with the thickness of the needle um, in between won't go through the, the seed beads. So we're going to use some super glue to stiffen up the thread. Careful when you open the super glue that you don't spill it all over the table or your fingers and hands. Just dip. the thread in the glue. Sorry for my hackled phrase, I was concentrating. And then let it dry, but you can also just use some plastic. You can also rub and pull the, the thread can also rub and pull the thread so that um, it straightens. Let it dry for um, a few seconds. Sorry, I was off camera again. I'm getting used to this. And now let it sit for a minute or so so that the, the, the glue can harden. Now you can see that this will be um, strong enough or solid enough or hard enough to bead, uh, to thread the beads. Um, you'll also have some thickness at the end, just cut and make it a pointy tip and you'll be fine. So my thread is stiff enough for me to use as a needle and we're gonna start stringing the beads. It's important to start with a fire polish bead because that's the last one we're gonna have to uh, crochet and the first ones we have to to have on our, our string are the seed beads and we're working backwards if that makes sense but you'll see at the end so you start with the fire polished beads and then you pick up an amount of seed beads that will equal the length of your fire polished beads or of your large bead you're using that's important because otherwise you're gonna see a lot of the of the wire when you crochet. If you don't pick up enough, you're gonna see the the thread. And if you pick up too too many, it's not gonna fit snugly, and you're gonna get loops um, of seed beads. 
And then the stringing for this one is fairly simple. Just repeat one large beat, four seed beats, one large beat. Now these are hard to pick up because they have um, a coating. And okay, so just keep on stringing one color, one dark blue. Well, in my case, one dark blue, four seed beads, one light blue, four, blue, four seed beads. I am using a hundred fire polished beads of each color. This will give me a finished piece of crocheted rope of 39 centimeters. There we go. Now this is maybe the most time consuming part of the of this necklace is the stringing of the beads. But it's very important that you check regularly if you're still on the right path. If you're not making any mistakes, always check if uh, your pattern is still correct because once you're it's very frustrating when you're you're hooking and you notice a mistake. It will you, you can't fix it. Once once you're hooking, you you can't take out any beads uh, to fix the the mistake you you made while stringing. So I'm gonna do this, and I'll see you when all my beads are on my bobbin of thread. Let's start hooking. Make a slip knot and two fairly loose chain stitches. One, two. Go into the first chain and pull up your first set of beads. So one set of bead is the large bead and the three, uh, the four, sorry, um, seed beads. The seed beads have to come first. If it's not, um, undo your, your, your beginning and take away uh, the, the large bead because this is what it has to look like. Okay, so now double crochet by yarning over behind the large bead. Pull through one, yarn over, and pull through two. This is very fiddly because of the, the thin thread, of course. Now, tighten this and chain one. Go back through one of the, the two chains from the beginning. Doesn't really matter which one it is. And pull up your next set of beads. Okay. So make sure you have two loops on your hook. Bring up your set of beads and again double crochet so yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Tighten, oops it's flipping, and again chain one. The chaining one in between is something we only do in the beginning just to make sure that 
this does not uh, loosen up too much. So starting from row two, we have the repeat and it goes as follows. We turn this so that your first set of beats is on your left hand and go through that loop here. Make sure that the seed beats are on one side and the large bead on the other side of your hook and the large bead must face you. Now bring up your next set of beads and if you're doing it right and you're using two different colors, your new set has to match the bead on your hook. That's also why I recommend doing it with two different colors of beads uh, for the first time. Again, we're going to um, double crochet, so yarn over, pull through one, oops, there you go, yarn over, pull through two. And this can be hard. This can be very fiddly and hard because first of all you're working with a thin thread but second of all the beads are also putting tension on the the loop on your on your hook so this is what a stitch should look like the two beads of the same color side by side now the next set like i said no more um chain stitches in between so the next set we do the same you go through the loop Make sure that the beads are separated properly. I like to hold it like this. I try to pull it tight with my pinky and ring finger and I hold the seed beads back with my middle finger. When I pull up my set, there we go. This is right, same color on my hook and on my thread. Yarn over, fold through one, yarn over, and pull through two. Oh, I lost my. I damaged, I seem to have damaged my my thread a little bit, but I think it will be fine. It's very, it's, it's handy to have um, a safety pin or a needle at your side to pick back up your, your working thread, um, I mean your, um, your loop um, if you should lose it and it happens. Okay, so the next one same go through the loop separate the beads make sure that the large one is facing you and pull up a new set you'll notice that as you progress it's going to be easier because you have more to hold on to now again yarn over pull through one yarn over pull through two and I notice now that I'm having a very, very hard time doing a double crochet. After this one, I'm gonna switch to just single crochets. That's usually how it works with me. The first two to three rows I can do doubles, but afterwards I switch to singles and that is fine. You don't have to do doubles all the way, but if you prefer to do it that way, you can but just make it harder for yourself. You cannot just start with single crochets. I've tried it. Um, it doesn't work. The first loops are just not tight enough and um, 
the beats don't stay where they should stay and it, it just does not work that's why i do one uh two the three rows of doubles and then i switch to singles so again here pull up your set I'm going to do my last double. The reason why it's so hard to do doubles is because the 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 beat the beads the large beats create tension on the tread. So there we go. I did three re three rows of doubles. That's good. Again, go through the loop and I want to show you this is how it should be. Wait, I'm gonna go out. Your loop should be in the middle of the beads, in the middle of your rope, I mean. Your working thread on the outside. So go through the loop, separate the large from the small beads, pull up a set. And now I'm just going to pull through all two loops at the same time. See, it works fine. And it's so much faster. <laughs> bring down your, or bring up your next set. Sorry for the shaking. Bring up the next set. Uh, -uh see, not good back to where you belong on the other side yeah not cooperating there we go bring up the next set and pull through And basically this is the repeat and this is fairly easy but the start is very fiddly and it's not uncommon that you have to start over a few times but I would really just want to tell you persevere and you'll get there just do it and undo it as many times as you need once you get past the three, four first rows, it's just easy. You only have to make sure that you separate your beads properly and that the large bead is facing you and you're good. I'm sorry if I go off camera every now, every now and then. So there you go. Now, if you were to, let's say, have to put your work down and you have to go do something, let me just grab a stitch marker somewhere. I have a set here. So let's say you have to stop doing what you're doing. Life gets in the way of fun, I know. Just put a stitch marker in like you would do with crochet and you're safe. Now, the problem is never to stop, but when you want to start again, you might be confused, not knowing, huh, do I have to go into this one next? Or do I have to go into this one next? Well, when you're using two different colors, it's easy. It's the one that is only once in your in your row. Like here, it's the light blue one. I only have one. The dark blue ones I have two. So I know that I have to go into this one. Now, if you're only working with one color, you can tell that the last stitch you, you did is the one where the two fire polished beads are side to side. That's your last stitch. So this is your next stitch. I hope that makes sense. 
and then just start over again with bringing up the sets and pulling through and once you have the hang of it once you like we say in Dutch if you translate it to, en to English once you have it in your fingers <laughs> it's actually a very fun technique to do I find it very relaxing but then again I find crochet relaxing while I know certain some people find it very stressful and but that's with all kinds of crafts I guess it takes patience they say but I think it's relaxing so there you go and you just basically repeat this step over and over again until you finished be um, crocheting all your beads yeah this is not cooperating every now and then you might see that something doesn't feel right doesn't look right don't be afraid to just frog it back and and redo it's better to to undo a little part and have a result that pleases you than to leave in the mistake because this technique is fairly fast so you're gonna be happy with the result ah see i was hoping i was gonna make a mistake here i can tell something is not right look i have four beads on my round that's not right undo it just undo it until you see that mm, this is right grab a needle or a safety pin pull up the loop and continue and which one do I have to take? it's this one and just hook on I'm gonna continue doing this and I'll see you when my beads are all crocheted. When I do things like that, well, actually crafts in, in general, I like to listen to podcasts or, or audiobooks. That's my favorite. What do you guys listen to while crafting? Is it music or do you need complete silence? Or do you have the TV on? Because, well, I like to watch TV while crafting, but actually it's just listening to TV. So I figure that audiobooks are better, so you don't have anything to watch. And you have a story. Okay, so I'm going to leave you guys here and I'll see you at the end of the rope. What you doing, JD? You want to sleep on my beat? As you can see, my old JD girl has joined me on my beat board. It's not the best place for her to lay down, but she's going to be grumpy when I move her. Look at her sleeping next to a bead. She's so silly. She just wants to be with me. Uh, 
I'm wondering if she's sleeping, really sleeping, or is she just pretending to sleep? I think she's pretending. Okay, so I'm down to the last row for the bracelet. Um, I will have used 45 um, fire, beads, uh, fire polished beads of each color. Now with the last one I'm gonna do a chain stitch in between. You know, just to make sure. There we go. And then to close, to finish, you just basically do a single crochet without the beads. There we go. And there we go. Uh huh. An unruly bee seed bead, but that's okay for the last row. And then I do a few two chain stitches. It really doesn't matter all that much. Cut the thread, leave leave a bit of a tail, and pull through and tighten. Okay, so I'm gonna move JD and show you how to close or put a clasp on the finished rope. Okay, so I gathered everything I need to close this uh, rope or um, to uh, add a clasp to the rope. The method I'm going to show now is with um, bead caps or end caps and uh, a T-pin. A T-pin or um, a head pin. This is a head pin. So, you need um, round nose pliers cutting uh, wire cutters and flat nose uh, pliers, um, a little bit of super glue because I tend to be paranoid when it comes to knots. So now put the pin through the thread work. And then with the round nose pliers, bend the head part of the of the pin up like this. I'm gonna do it a little bit more even until you have a, a crossing here. Then I'm gonna switch hands because I am a total righty. I am not ambidextrous. I cannot use my left hand as well as my right hand. So now wrap the wrap the um, the wire part around right under the the the. Oh gosh, right under the, the head of the pin so that it's nice and closed. And then wrap the thread around a few times and make a few knots. I'm gonna do that and usually I like to make about five knots. Pull them tight. Now this will be completely covered with the, the cap. So if it's a little bit uh, 
clumsy or sloppy that it really doesn't matter. I'm going to make one more. There we go. Now a tiny drop of super glue on the knots. Just make sure you don't get it on the beads or your fingers. And there we go. And cut off the, the thread. Now this is crooked, but it doesn't really matter. Put the cap on. There you go. And now, normally, we would cut off about to a centimeter to make a nice round eye. But here, I want the wire to actually push the cap down and fix this so that there is this this isn't loose and and it, it won't move up and reveal the the knots so we want to really put it down so pull it uh, push it down so you can leave about two centimeters like almost an inch and with the round nose pliers the way i do it is i kind of roll it against my thumb push it down oops sorry so push it down i'm gonna show you like this and keep on rolling see keep on rolling it until you feel the resistance you cannot go any further and you made a spiral this is snug and won't go anywhere. I'm just gonna push this a little snugger too. And there we go. Oops, sorry. And there you go. Now you do the same thing on the other side. Yeah, it's not cooperating, so pin, you stick it through the, the threads, make a loop, loop. make a loop and wrap and then make a few knots and wrap the, the thread around a few times, make a few knots. I could have left a little bit more tail to make it easier. So make a few knots, wrap it around a few times. I should have given myself a little more tail to work with so this will definitely not get five knots
I'm gonna even have to use the pliers to get to make knots. Yeah, three knots will be it for this side. But as we're gluing them, I'm confident it'll hold. There we go. Cut. Sorry. And Put the bead cap on. Cut the wire. And sorry, roll. And there we go. So here we go, we have two end caps with two eyes. All that's left is to put the rings on. So open a ring always like this. I'm using a small ring on the clasp side to make it more elegant. and a large ring on the other side to make it easier to open and close the bracelet. So always open an eye like, uh, a ring like this, never pull it open like that, because it might break but it will definitely lose its shape. And if you do it like this, you will always have a nice round ring. And there we go! the bracelet. Now this is only one possible way to add a clasp. I um, will do a tutorial with the other possibilities to um, finish uh, rope necklaces like um, this crochet or, or the other crochet, but I find this the easiest one for this kind of uh, work. So then, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll put a formula in the, in the description box so that you can calculate how many beads you need to make the necklace and the bracelet. This is about uh, two times a hundred uh, large beads and um, seven grams of seed beads. This one is two times 45 beads and about five grams of seed beads. If you have any questions or you run into problems, you can always leave a question or a comment in the comment section, but you can also send me an email on the address that you can also find in the description box. I thank you all so much for watching and I hope that I inspire you to start with this fun technique and I'll see you next time. Bye!